From San Antonio, Texas, home of the Alamo, the Riverwalk, and the World Heritage San Antonio Missions, this is the Exit Planning Coach Podcast with John F. Dini. Designed to help advisors who work with business owners, John talks with top professionals in the exit planning field about best practices, marketing tips, and how to be more effective when working with owners. Now, here's John F. Dean. Welcome to today's episode of the Exit Planning Coach Podcast. I'm here with Brett Andrews from Glendale, Arizona. And Brett is the CEO and founder of a triptych of companies. He is the head of the Fortress Companies. And Brett, you have three companies. Would you name them for me, please? So I don't get sure. them wrong. Yes, Fortress Financial Strategies, Fortress Insurance Services, and Fortress Business Advisory. Thank you. Brett believes that financial independence begins with a strong foundation, and there are four equally important cornerstones, accumulation growth, risk management and asset protection, structural efficiency and tax reduction, and then succession and legacy planning. Brett brings a different perspective to his financial planning and wealth management business because of his background as a portfolio manager, where he did technical analysis. And we're going to talk a little bit during the show about business cycles. And uh, I think it was Warren Buffett that said, it's best to buy on the way up and sell on the way down. That's as much as you can expect out of your, out of your advisor. And uh, we'll talk about how he helps companies with that. But Brett, welcome. Glad to have you. Thank you it's so much pleasure. for taking the time. And uh I always start with the same question with everybody when we're on for the first time. Uh, you've worked with business owners for a long time. What made you decide to add exit planning to your portfolio of services? Well, as a uh, wealth manager and dealing with uh, financial planning, it often came up that the largest uh, asset that most advi uh, that most uh, business owners have, obviously, is their business. So it was an important factor to include in a uh, plan so that we could map out where in the future that value could be and what it would look like as we planned for an ultimate exit uh, for that business owner. Great. And I know you hold both the CXP from BEI and the SEPA from EPI. Which one did you get first? Uh, I went with BEI first. I, I got the CEXP first. So ah. that was, uh, it was a, a very in-depth course and I learned a lot, so but it added to um, one thing that uh, started me on the course was my certified wealth strategist designation from Canon uh, was was very valuable. Um, they have specific angles uh, wealth management dealing with business owners specifically, ah. so that really started me on my path towards making that a major part of my business. Um, also, coming from uh, both of my parents were business owners and. Uh, my father in the manufacturing industry uh, growing up. So it, it's one of those things that it all made sense to me, came together, and it was a, a niche that not a lot of people in the financial world really wanted to deal with. They just wanted to sell products. They didn't really want to be planners. Yeah. And how long ago did you go through the BEI program, just out of curiosity? BEI, I completed the capstone project in 2019. Okay. But I did my certified wealth strategist in 2011, and we're dealing with a lot of uh, more complicated financial planning, wealth management issues for business owners uh, in that eight-year span in between there from 2011 when I got that. Yeah. I mean, I go back about that far. I think I first went to BEI in 2010. And uh, that's when, you know, you said exit planning to somebody and you got a blank stare. Nobody knew what you were talking about. <laughs> Yeah. No, you gave me encouragement. Uh, I don't remember a year or two ago we were talking and you said, yeah, I used to still at this day and age, there's not a ton of exit planners out there and uh, it's growing now, but only two or three years ago, you could put them all in one room. Yeah. I just, uh, I just did some, I'm, you know, I'm always fooling around. You read some of my stuff, you know, I'm always fooling around with the numbers in the industry uh, in order. If anything like half of the business owners decided to engage in exit planning, we would need about seven times the number of planners we have today. Um, it's just, it's phenomenal how few business owners have really worried much about the most important asset in their lives. 
Describe a new, a first meeting with a new client for me. How do you approach a client when you first sit down with them and talk to them? Normally start with uh, a lot of questions. We, we ask a lot of questions to see what they're looking to achieve, what their expectations are, um, what their current situation looks like and, and where they'd like to be in the future. So that way uh, we can gauge uh, and set realistic expectations of what we're able to help them accomplish. You know, um, you told me, you know, when we were talking offline, I know you use a number of different softwares and approaches. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you said you use Valuability, you use Mouse, you use our product, Exit Map. Um, you know, do you take pieces of each of those or, or is it situational depending on the client? It is situational depending on the client, but we often um, do combine them together in a lot of uh, different ways. So we find that certain softwares have really strong points and then they all have certain shortcomings that uh, can often be overcome with another software. So I'm, I'm constantly on the search for softwares, not just in this business, but also in the financial planning world, as well as, uh, you know, everything from the personality types of things that you look at with, you know, disc, we use PI index instead. Um, we found mm -hmm. that to be very useful for us, but um, I am a, uh, I'm very into technology and software and uh, finding ways to make those things fit together. I think that's one of my, my strong points is, is being able to find softwares and how to work them together in different programs and different people and how to piece them together to make a, a machine run well. That's neat. We just mentioned that exit planning, although it's better known, is still you know, woefully absent in most business owners' lexicons. What's what's the trick? What 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 is the magic formula when you're talking to a client that makes them say, "You're right. I need to be doing some exit planning." I'm finding recently, uh, and one of the things I think that actually uh, was one of my synergies with you is a lot of your discussions on your book in your books and in some of your videos about demographics. Um, in my background, studying technical analysis, following trends, there's, there's an individual named, named Harry Dent that talks about sure. um, a lot of the um, demographic issues that we have in the country. He's been talking about it for a long time. He's been ahead of the curve for a long time. So, um, you know, sometimes that can be frustrating. But at the same time, like he says, or maybe you said, somebody said that uh, they're not making any new 40-year-olds, and that's the most productive <laughs> age. And it's pretty impossible to make somebody that was born 10 years ago, 40 overnight. So it's, it's not coming and there is a huge gap. So to answer your question, I think the most enlightening moment that I've seen with clients in conversations is they, they think I've got five years and, and some of the studies we've seen, everyone's always five years, five years, I'll do it in five years. And then they're 75 years old um, and they keep waiting and waiting where the demographic discussion and when I combine that with where we are in the economy and where we are as a country, all combined together, it's a pretty enlightening uh, number when I start telling them that your number of uh, 250 business owners needing to sell for every one uh, Generation X buyer out there. I think sometimes that helps them start yeah. thinking we should probably start motivating <clears throat> ourselves forward now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I did a... Uh... I was on a panel this morning for one of the chambers of commerce and uh, I, I was running the numbers last night. And if you take the number of businesses that theoretically reach retirement age, every the owner reaches retirement age every year, you know, the youngest boomer is 58 years old this year. And so if you take the number of 65s that hit in a year, and then you take the statistics of how many uh, are listed by intermediaries for sale. And then the IBBA's own numbers about how many actually sell from those that are listed. It's really shocking. Uh, about 3% of businesses will successfully change hands by a sale to a third party through an intermediary. Uh, the other 97% have to figure out their own. Um, and I think, you know, it's, it's just, you know, the, the, the 
moderator wanted to wrap up after that and i said no don't I, I just interrupted him i said don't wrap up now ask somebody another question because that was too depressing to leave <laughs> to leave the breakfast on you know? yeah we got a lot of work to do yeah we do how would you describe your ideal client relationship you do a number of different things do you do them all for every client do you bring them do they bring the them optimal them? client um we do the financial planning um, and help them with the value building as well as the exit planning, succession planning, um, contingency planning. We, you know, do have the insurance agency. So we take care of a lot of the buy sell agreements and more complicated, uh, planning structures within the uh, non-qualified space that might entail utilizing, uh, tax advantage types of scenarios like, uh, life insurance or other types of scenarios. But, um, those are the areas I like to, to really delve into the financial planning. I'm, I'm myself following my own, uh, you know, preaching. I I'm building a, a team of, of advisors that, uh, might not have as uh, much gray hair as myself, although it's still not totally gray, but, um, have been doing this a while that I can build up into a financial planning force that, um, will take, you know, the basics of financial planning. And then I will do more of the advanced planning, so mm -hmm. my ideal client is is the complicated situations, the tax strategy situations, the you know uh, helping with the um, overall uh, value building in the company, and then I have a team that deals with the other expertise, things like management and uh, helping with uh, Tara helps me with that as well when it comes to um, the employees and and helping build the actual management of the company and putting the the um, things into place. Yeah, that's one of the things I said this morning. There were about 40 business owners in the room, and they, and one of the questions asked was, you know, what is the most important thing I can do to make my company successful? And I said, people. Yeah. I said, you know, when it comes to value enhancement, I can tell you everything in the world about how to improve your sales, your marketing, your financial reporting, your, your, uh, products, your geography, your delivery methods. But if you don't have a team to implement it, it just doesn't make any difference. No, absolutely. People are, uh, are the most important part. And that's what I've never understood about uh, some people's philosophy of, oh, I can replace people. You want to keep the people that you spent the time training wow. on. And, you know, somebody makes an error that was an expensive uh, mistake that you paid for. So you might as well keep them around. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. They hopefully will never make that mistake again. <laughs> hopefully. If they do, then maybe you're not keeping them around. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me take a break for a second so we can pay for the podcast and, and do a little bit of uh, pitch here. Uh, and we'll be back in just 60 seconds. Hello, John F. Dini here. And I'm very excited to announce the publication of the Exit Planning Coach Handbook. Inspiration for the handbook comes from my 25 years of working as a coach to business owners, with 12 of those years dedicated to helping them plan their business transitions. It is a guide for advisors that explains why working with business owners is so dramatically different from working with other executives. It provides insights on how to approach planning conversations with owners more effectively. Plus, it takes you through the steps that will help you develop your relationship as their most trusted advisor. I wrote this book for advisors who want their clients to move on to a second act that's even more rewarding than their first. If you read any of my previous books, you know I don't lecture. It's a conversation between two professionals. If you work with business owners, I strongly encourage you to read the Exit Planning Coach Handbook. I think it will quickly become a go-to in your reference library. It is currently available on Amazon and the Kindle Store in paperback and as an audiobook. Okay, welcome back to the Exit Planning Coach Podcast. I'm here with Brett Andrews. And Brett, uh, we have, we're advisor to advisor, but we have people that are looking for connections in other geographies, people that are looking for connections in other skills. And of course, we'll have this information when we release the podcast. But could you also give us how to, your contact information, please? Um, contact, our best uh, way to find us is thefortresscompanies.com. Um, that is our main site that includes all three of our businesses, just a link to all three of them. 
So it's uh, just www.thefortresscompanies.com. And our phone number is 623-255-5180. And then if you look me up on LinkedIn, that's uh, my Rolodex of the uh, modern era. So I'm always available on there. Great. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we talked a, a bit before we came on uh, on a very interesting subject, which was your technical analysis as a portfolio manager uh, and how you utilize that in dealing with companies, especially when it comes to acquisition and divestiture. Can you tell us a little bit about how you read business cycles and use it to advise business owners? Absolutely. So, um, in portfolio management, uh, I stumbled across many years ago during the uh, first major recession in 2000. I started training uh, in uh, technical analysis under uh, Tom Dorsey at Dorsey Wright and then expanded my knowledge into um, to the, the Market Technicians Association and really delved highly into um, studying trends, how volume flows in the publicly traded markets. So one of the things that I found uh, extremely um, useful in my practice for managing portfolios was sector rotation models and utilizing those in the business uh, where we were within the business cycle. So um, after many years of doing that and getting into exit planning, it became apparent to me as we started to delve down into the industry codes while doing valuations with our software, as well as looking at the businesses themselves those same codes could be applied to a lot of the research that I was already doing in technical analysis for portfolio management. So um, you can take things all the way down to the industry level, uh, you know, from everything in an industrial type sector, all the way down to auto parts manufacturing. And then you could see how the public markets are trending and also look and see how that could apply to the private markets as these businesses are looking to build value and when is the time to potentially be adding uh, new employees, expanding, looking for opportunities to buy competitors, multiple uh, applications, I feel that really could help them uh, with not necessarily timing, but at least figuring our, out where you are in the business cycle. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people say you can't time the markets. And I think I, I argue against that in the sense of, it's not timing the market if the average business cycle is five years and each peak to trough or trough to peak is often about two years. If you cut off 20% on either end, that's still pretty favorable towards you. <laughs> yeah. You have to pick the exact bottom or the exact top, but if you can't figure it out in a two-year span, then you should be doing something else. Right. And well, that Buffett <laughs> comment on the way up or on the way down. You, <laughs> yeah, exactly. At least if you know which direction it's going, you can make better decisions. Right. But it does present opportunities uh, when you know you're in a recession that other people will be panicking and be making decisions based on emotion. If you've been prepared in the advanced part of that and being prepared to potentially make acquisitions and expand your business, there's an opportunity there. Yes. Very, very dearly, um, very clearly, the the old French revolutionary saying, when there's blood in the streets, buy real estate. When everybody else panics, it's the one with a calm head. I just I just watched uh, Unforgiven again the other night, uh, mm -hmm. the, Clint, the Clint Eastwood uh, Western. Uh, oh, yeah. Got all the Oscar nominations, you know, that's it reminds me of that, you know. <laughs> Thank yes. You. Yes. He can. He can. He can take out a room full of guys just because he shoots slowly, pays attention, <laughs> makes sure what he's doing, and the rest of them are, are shooting guns off in nineteen different directions and not hitting anything. What is your biggest challenge when it comes to exit planning in in working with clients? Where 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 was the rough spot? Um, I would say probably helping them understand that they need to change often. Um, that certain habits that they've developed over the years are what's holding them back um, or preventing them from moving on to the next phase. It's uh, ha having three businesses myself, I, I often identify with the fact that it's super hard to let go of the reins, especially when you've become the expert. But the difference is, no matter how many employees you have, um, the lifestyle business is not the business that sells as much as the business that's been developed with, you know, a set of 
operational procedures and people and all the things that are something that you can purchase. Um, I've known businesses that make a great income, but hardly have any value because of yeah. the fact that they, they don't have a, a business to sell. They have their personality or their, their connections are the business. And that is not uh, the way that they're going to thrive. Yeah. It's hard though. Um, you know, being, being a planner and, and, and having a shop here and having eight other people around me that are involved in planning every day. When my wife and I uh, took off to the Middle East for a vacation and we were going to be up by Sudan and there were some things going on in Sudan as they usually are. Yeah. Um, and the employees asked about, you know, the location of my continuity plan and, uh, you know, that made me realize I probably needed to do a continuity plan. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's funny what an emotional exercise it was. It was, ac you know, actually trying to detail how the company would run without me was was more emotional than I expected. Um, we did it, but and I'm sure it'll work. It would work, but well, hopefully it won't have to. <laughs> but um, but it was it was an interesting exercise. It gave me a lot more empathy for my clients that dragged their feet. <laughs> yeah. How do you market? Would, would most of us get our market? Most of us get our new clients through referrals. How do you work your referral network, your centers of influence? Um, well, my centers of influence are my main source, uh, as well as uh, existing clients. And we do have that advantage since we have three businesses. They sometimes find us through one of those routes. Um, but then at the same time, uh, our centers of influence, I would say, uh, have been probably our best introduction source and um, have led us to uh, eventually get the, the majority of our clients. Let me well, add there. Sorry, we are certainly. working uh, a lot more uh, outreach on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have, like I said, the three different websites and well, four uh, Fortress Companies is just a, a landing page primarily with uh, the other Right, right. The three the channels. Three, the three logos across it have been there. Yeah. Exactly. And the buttons underneath that they can click on to go see mm -hmm. them. But each of those businesses has their own marketing approach, but yet at the same time has a bend towards business owners. Really, that's the I have in the past worked with individuals, but my my passion is to work with business owners. So ultimately the majority of the clients that I personally will work with will be business owners. Uh, in their financial planning and their wealth management from the sale, the, the build to the sale, and then the rest of their life. So um, a lot of internet marketing and uh, a lot of that is where we're really picking up our pace now. And uh, we'll be doing our own, uh, I'm going to start recording a lot of videos and I'm going to start probably doing these market updates, the technical trend analysis that I was mm -hmm. talking about, where we are in the business cycle, a lot of those types of things. I'm going to be starting to post those. Uh, for people that you know follow me on LinkedIn or whatever, or if they're uh, if they're on our lists or, or connect with us in any way, then they'll be able to see those. Great, great. Yeah, we've uh, um, Hannah, whom you know, in mm -hmm. our shop, uh, that was encouraging me to do that, and we started it about six months ago, and it's had an effect. It's it's yeah. you know I'm, I'm an old guy, you know. I was like, <laughs> pop, uh, we don't need to do that, but it's yeah. it's actually worked out fairly well. Well, and it's um, interesting too. I think it's an educational opportunity and I've kind of discovered about myself over time is that as I've learned, uh, I like to learn. So I'm constantly working on my own personal education to expand my knowledge base. But as I learn things to break things down into an easy, um, non-jargoned, explainable way, you know, they've always said, if you can explain it to a second grader, then you're doing well. Um, I, I work on that actively so that I can start to educate people on the you start throwing terms out like cross sell buy sell agreements you know you start getting complicated words out there people are you know loan regime type scenarios are like what the heck does that mean you you want to be able to quantify those things into an easy explanation so somebody can understand oh, that may apply to me and that's something or if they're out searching and they want to find a way to to uh, expand their knowledge on something you can be a resource that you're at least yeah. giving and then they will find you as you know, and you know our philosophy, you've got a copy of the handbook. Um, you know, I think one of the worst things an advisor can do is try to 
impress a prospective client with how much I know that you don't. Yeah. I don't think that's the way to get somebody to pay attention to you. Uh, last question, finish it up. Um, and this is where we always finish. We in this in this podcast and elsewhere, we're always discussing uh, how many more advisors uh, the world could use in exit planning to help business owners now, and how much we're outnumbered. What would be your advice? People are picking up exit planning as a as an add on to their practices left and right. What would be your advice to anybody starting out in exit planning? Well, my first uh, place to start is always the way that I did it anyway, is education. Um, you have to, first of all, determine which education you find of value to yourself, because I think everybody has their own personality and their own background. Um, I don't have a management background. I don't have a, I'm not a CPA. Um, I'm not an attorney. Uh, so each, I think, specialty that comes into it, and that's what I liked about the SEPA program, was it carved out those and gave the specific education that people needed in their realm. Now, if you start to want to deal with more realms, you can move yourself from, they use the quarterback quote, uh, but I know you, and I agree, actually, the coach is a much better uh, position to be in for that scenario. So um, we like to act as the coach in our practice, and that comes from having a, a broad range of knowledge, but not necessarily being the expert in every single thing. But I can go and have a conversation with an attorney what I'm trying to accomplish and let them do all the legal work uh, and bring them in. So I think that the best advice that I could give to somebody that's getting into it is find mentors, find people um, that you can ask questions of that uh, as you gain your education and you're unsure, maybe you're heading on the right path that you can go and talk to, which I've done with you, John, over the years. I've called you uh, many times when I was stumbling through something that I, I wanted to ask you your, your thought process on that and, and incorporate it into my thought process to uh, how to move forward. Well, well, well said, and, and thank you for doing that, and I enjoy it, and I hope we do it again soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Brett Andrews has been my guest. This has been a lot of fun, Brett. Enjoyed it. Hope Thanks we for having me. do it again sometime soon. And you have a terrific day. You too. Thanks. Thanks a lot.